What is up everybody out there in Heroclix land? This once again is Scott Porter back for day two of our brand new unboxing series, Marvel Heroclix Empire. Uh, yesterday we opened two boosters. They were awesome. We had everything from Golden Oldie to Brawn to some awesome generics, Kree and Scroll together to Colossus with a Soul Sword. It was kind of bonkers and it was awesome. We also have some extra stuff to look at every single day. Um, yesterday we were able to check out one of the other super rares from the set, the uh, Wolverine Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. We also got Kitty Pride Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I wonder if we're going to see all these mutant agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. throughout the years. Maybe Dazzler is going to come into play. That would be really, really cool. Um, we also have legacy cards to look at still. We have the Play at Home kit to look at still. We have the awesome Empire Miniatures game that's going to be coming uh, out very soon. And I got some spe special sneak peek figures for the next Heroclix set that's coming out in um, 2021, still on the way. So we've got a ton of stuff to get through, including eight more boosters uh, for the unboxing series for Empire. I'm very excited about this set. Hopefully, uh, pre-releases will start early part of December and you will have all of these uh, bricks and boosters in your hand for the holiday season. I'm hoping for the best just as everyone else is out there. Um, yesterday, we did see a wide array of heroes. I'm hoping to see a little bit more on the villain side, maybe, possibly. I know I explained a lot of things that maybe sounded very confusing in day one of the unboxing. And if you didn't watch day one, just press pause, go back and watch that, and we'll wait for you here until you catch up. Um, but as we open more of these boosters, I hope to maybe illuminate uh, a little more of the storyline, a little more of what each character was doing within the confines of the story. But we didn't see any Kotati yesterday, uh, in including the big bad of the entire Empire story, Sequoia. We didn't really see anybody in scroll, scroll leadership or anybody, uh, say, an, an accuser on the Cree side, uh, pursuers. We didn't see any of that stuff yet, so I'm excited to, to get into that. We did see Captain America, but we didn't see Iron Man. We didn't see Captain Marvel. We didn't see Thor. We didn't see a lot of the main Avengers force. We did get the Thing, but he was in his Guardians of the Galaxy getup. So we still are waiting for the Fantastic Four that was actually jumping into the fray in this particular storyline. And I want to see uh, what else we're going to get from all of these side stories that we had. Uh, you know, Fantastic Four Empire, which was a two-part mini, or X-Men Empire, which was a four-part mini. Uh, Captain America Empire, which I think was three issues long. So hoping to see a little bit more of all of that. And Captain America Empire... What I was saying was the Kotati, I'm not so sure we're going to see a lot of those generals. I cannot remember the guy that was Captain America's adversary in the Captain America mini. I do remember he, he basically raised like a mountain plant to, uh, you know, come up out of the ground. That's why I brought this guy because I thought he looked like the most like a, a big plant monster. I know it's a mole, uh, uh, Giganto, the mole monster, but um, it looks a little bit like it can fit in with the Kotati. So uh, for anybody that missed yesterday, the Kotati are this race of plant people. Um, they just think that plants are perfect harmony for the universe and that they don't need flesh bags walking around. They don't need any humans or any humanoid type of aliens. They want to eradicate all life all across the galaxy using their little uh, death flowers. <laughs> I'm not kidding, guys. Uh, they use these death flowers and a big part of how they're going to spread um, this, this death flower's influence to drive all of these races crazy and eventually eradicate them is by using vibranium. So Wakanda comes in to play big time, so I'm expecting we see a really cool Black Panther. He dons an awesome spacesuit. Um, I didn't really think about the fact that vibranium came to Earth by way of an asteroid. It's really like a space metal, but I always just associate it with our Earth because it's been around for so long just in... Wakanda in the context of Wakanda and they're protecting the vibranium and they're the only country in the world that has vibranium and I didn't really think about the fact that vibranium's still out there in the galaxy elsewhere uh, until this particular story. They want to build this giant Kotati mound over the largest vibranium center in Wakanda and put a death flower right on the top of it to get the frequency of this death flower or death seed or whatever they call it and, and really be able to shoot it all throughout the universe by using vibranium in all the corners of the galaxy. And um, so there's a, there's a 
pretty brutal final battle that happens there with Black Panther, with Swordsman, uh, who is now a, a plant zombie. So I'm expecting to see Sequoia, Swordsman, Super Scroll, and I'm hoping to get more of those villains today and, and maybe some more of the heroes too. So um, with that, we begin. This is booster number three of our Hero Clicks Empire unboxing. I hope you guys have enjoyed everything so far. Hope you guys have liked the character selection. I know I really have. And uh, let's see who we get now. Uh, okay. Oh, interesting. Um, we have Madam Hydra. All right. We have. Oh yes. Okay. This is so cool. Okay, Beldan. Here we have Beldan. Tell you more about Beldan in just a moment. We also have Wasp, who was another member of the Secret Avengers with Beast that we got yesterday. Anome, uh, who is Wakandan and uh, is a part of Future Foundation. And then we have Hulkling, but this isn't the Hulkling that's on the outside of the box. The Hulkling we have on the outside of the box is sitting in the throne with the, the Star Sword, otherwise known as Excelsior. So I'm guessing we're going to get a couple of Hulklings. And you know what? We really should. Uh, if there was ever going to be a title character, I would think maybe it would be Hulkling. I, I don't know uh, if there's going to be a title character in this particular set, but that would make sense, I think, to me. Um, I want to talk about Beldam. Let's look at Madame Hydra first, though, because she seems to be more of uh, one of the more random figures we have in the set. Um, Madame Hydra, I'll pop her out here, get a little tight solo shot there for you of her. See if we can play a little bit. There we go. Um, let's see. Madame Hydra's card. We've got Hydra, Soldier, Spy. Ophelia Sarkissian, uh, set number 42, and she is 45 points. She has a trait called follow-up, free, once per turn for all characters with a follow-up trait. Ooh, okay, I'm, I'm sensing shared trait here. Make an attack using Madame Hydra's printed combat values, but only to target a single character. Hit with an attack made by another friendly character with the Hydra keyword. She also has a special damage power right under your nose the whole time. Leadership and outwit on the back of the card. You can see her stats there. A lot of stealth, some poison, combat reflexes. And uh, we're seeing a pretty good power variety. We're actually seeing a good point variety as well. So um, I'm liking, you know, we had that monster Captain America yesterday that we got. But I am definitely liking uh, the variety that we're getting in point cost and power sets. Uh, it's pretty great. So the next one I'm going to look at is uh, Secret Avengers. Um, she wasn't only in the Secret Avengers, but Wasp. Let's get a good look at her there for you guys. And here is her card. Wasp has Avengers, Shield, Wakanda. Scientist and spy. She is a captain. I smell eight click long dial. Uh, you have a trait. Remember your training. Free. Choose a friendly sidekick. That sidekick has the shield team ability for this turn. She has shield and Avengers team abilities. Look at the back here. And yes, she is eight clicks long, granting that shield team ability to her allies for a very long time. Running shot, uh, penetrating psychic blast leadership. She can go tiny. She's got five range and two targets. 60 points for eight clicks or 40 for five clicks. That is a pretty solid uh, Janet Van Dyne, if I do say. Set number 28, and like I said, comes in at 60 or 40 points. Um, yeah, that is pretty cool. That is a really strong captain. So our first captain, I think we got a couple of sidekicks yesterday, but no no captains. No, I think maybe we got one, but it was Colossus, I believe, for the Jean Grey School of Mutants. Let's go with Anome next. She's Wakandan, and I talked about this uh, a while back in one of the other Fantastic Four sets, a couple of sets ago, but she joined the Future Foundation in a newer series uh, where we got Becky Barnes, and I'm still 
crossing my fingers that eventually we get her, but uh, we did not. But Anome is awesome, and she proves it with her card here. She is a captain and a sidekick, which is awesome. Fantastic Four, Wakanda, and Scientist Keywords, set number 15. She has a trait, I optimized your equipment, hope you don't mind. Friendly sidekicks using outwit, perplex, or probability control may use it a second time each turn. She has the Fantastic Four team ability. Yep, and there you go. Future Foundation, which we've seen a lot of, but she will be very, very useful. She comes in at 40 points, so you're going to have to find sidekicks that you know, can fit under her captain hood, but um, she is pretty cool. Captain and sidekick all at the same time. I like that a lot. Okay, let's go with Hulkling. I think this is going to be a different version of Hulkling than uh, I was expecting necessarily in this set because uh, on the side of the booster, um, if we take a look from top down here, it's more of that regal, imperial leader, uh, emperor Hulkling kind of thing. And this one is less of that. This one is more old school kind of young Avenger style Hulkling here. But still, let's take a peek at his card. Set number one, as you should be. Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Kree, Scrolls, and Young Avengers. Teddy Altman has a trait protecting Billy. Friendly characters that share a keyword with Hulkling may use Mastermind but only to choose Hulkling. If the friendly character is named Wiccan and he is within four squares, he may choose Hulkling regardless of adjacency. So a little bit of long distance masterminding there to keep Billy safe. Look on the back, five clicks long, but does have invulnerability. So you've got to punch through that to actually cause some damage where you could be damaging Wiccan uh, if you're not doing enough damage, you're not going to punch through Hulkling. So he is in position to actually shrug off some hits a little bit there. So that is a Hulkling, but that's more that Young Avengers run Hulkling. Uh, I still can't wait to see like Emperor Hulkling with the Star Sword. I think it's going to be awesome. Okay, Bell Dan. Yesterday's video, I said... The Korean Scroll War has bled into almost every single part of the Marvel galaxy. And it bled into the trial of Jean Grey, actually, once upon a time. Um, when Phoenix was on trial for all of her crimes against the planets and the universe, um, the Kree and the Scroll both sent a representative of their own. The Kree sent Beldan. The Scrolls sent. Raxor, I believe his name was, and they went, and there was an idea kicked around that, um, and I think it might have been Charles Xavier that brought it up, but that uh, Phoenix's fate should be decided in a duel or a contest of, of you know, strength, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, the Kree were against it. The scrolls were for it, and so in an attempt to weaken the X-Men, um, I think that Raxor took the guise of, I think it was Storm, tried to kill Beast, tried to incite some type of violence, and, and ended up not getting away with it, and then Beldan made fun of uh, Raxor, and then they, uh, in Kree, Skrull, uh, Way, just started fighting. But they fought for months, and they fought in different locations, and they were at each other's throats constantly, and they were kind of, for a while, the avatars of the kree scroll War. And they, they caused damage, they caused um, a lot of things to go awry, but over the years, um, they gained a respect for each other throughout these battles. And when a truce was called between the Kree and the scroll, they walked away from that battle. And they eventually, um, after their time was served, became good friends and went to Earth and tried to find Hulkling. They were served with finding Hulkling and bringing him into the fold, and they were really the ones that guided Teddy to become emperor and, and find what was hopefully going to be an eternal peace for the Kree and the Skrulls. Now, what you don't know is that, of course, Hulkling's grandmother 
uh, is you know acting under the guise of a pursuer and one of the advisors for Teddy, and it turns out that she uh, wants to kill the Katati, and she also wants to kill humanity, and she wants the scrolls to reign supreme, and she doesn't want peace, but um, she gets found later, and she'll probably be in this set, I would think. Urkil, I think, is her name. Uh, Urkel? Urkel? From, no, uh, Arkil, I think, is her name. And, um, you know, but Beldan and Raxor had a huge part to play in all of this stuff. Unfortunately, though, Katati had sleeper agents everywhere. Um, Beldan meets his end um, from a Katati. And when Raxor feels that as though his job is complete and he has delivered Teddy to the Empire, he goes to get off of Earth as well. And he ends up being confronted by um, some people questioning him. I think there are Avengers on, on what happened, why there's a truce called, is, is the war really over, and he's not sure. And then they say they found Beldan dead, and Beldan's last words were, beware the trees, or the, like a note is given to him. And then you see this panic come over Raxor's face because he had just eaten an apple a little while ago and a tree bursts out of his chest, killing him. So uh, these two legendary warriors, Beldan, I'm pretty much saying this confirms that Raxor is going to be in the set too, have such a long, cool history. And they're not even D-level characters within Marvel, but what Marvel is so good at is building out over decades characters. I mean, these guys have been around forever. So to see Beldan in this set is really, really cool to me. Sorry about the long-winded explanation, but I'm really excited to see Beldan and Raxor in this set because I, I think they deserve their due. And I'm glad that WizKids was able to do that. Let's take a look at Beldan real quick. Uh, the figure here, and then we will switch here. You can see his little ray gun. A little translucent piece on it. Looking good, looking good, Beldan. All right, here we go. Uh, Kree and soldier, keywords. He's a captain, that's awesome. Okay, 33 is his set number. He comes in at 40 points. And he has a trait, chosen for single combat. Unique modifier, free. Choose a friendly sidekick. The chosen sidekick modifies attack and damage by plus one this turn. That means that those Kree soldiers we got on day one are now a lot more dangerous. And you know what? Let me go ahead and grab that card so we can see uh, what he is pumping them up to because we did get the Kree soldiers yesterday. And uh, we'll just see. They are sidekicks. So it says that um, he ups their attack and damage. So all of a sudden, if he is captaining a bunch of these soldiers, they get a 12 attack and 3 damage for 20 points. And if you can rock a bunch of them and he's still on the board, uh, that is one dangerous force. That is, that's pretty great. Running shot, 12 attack, 3 damage with energy shield deflection. The captain and sidekick mechanic is going strong. That is pretty awesome. All right. Whew. I know. I know. But this is why you guys come. You know, I, I, sometimes I apologize for telling so many stories. But I, I feel like at this point, you know, we're family. I'm like the, the crazy uncle that everybody's like, oh, boy, here goes... Here goes Crazy Uncle Scott again with all of his stories. Uh, yeah, we've heard this one before, buddy. Um, but sometimes I feel like I tell you guys something new, something you never heard before, something you never read before. So um, Beldan and Raxor in the set makes me super happy because that's what I was hoping for out of Empire. I was hoping that we get some of these pieces of this long, storied battle between the Kree and the Skull, and it looks like we are. Okay, ooh, we did get another super rare uh, today. Uh, this is awesome. Okay, so we got another scroll spy, and I will take as many scroll generics as I can get. Um, let's see, we also got Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider. So I get to tell you about what, what he gets up to in the middle of Empire. Oh, She-Hulk. Oh, man. What a heartbreaking tale She-Hulk has to tell in this particular set. Oh man! Oh, we got Captain Marvel after she was made an accuser by Hulkling. Uh, one of his first decisions is to give her the hammer uh, and, and make her an accuser. And man, is she well set for it. And then we do get the big bad. We get Koi. Remember, his name is Sequoia. 
So when you look at his name, which is Q-U-O-I, it's not Koi, it's not Kui, it's it's Koi, like Sequoia, Sequoia. So that's how you, that's how you say your name, so, say his name, so as not to offend uh, this little plastic <laughs> figure. <laughs> um, that's a pretty good, this is a pretty good booster. We've already seen the Scroll Spy. I'm very happy to have him. I will have as many as I can. Oh man, where to start? Okay, this is where we start getting into like the really cool stuff that they did with Empire. As a whole, I think Empire is a, is a middle of the road major Marvel crossover event. As a whole. But some of the story beats inside of it, some of the things that they do to characters had long-lasting effects coming out of Empire, um, or what I, what I think are going to be very long-lasting effects. And let's go ahead and look at uh, Robbie Reyes first. Uh, Robbie, as a member of the Avengers, is, is pretty interesting to me. And when the Kree and Skrull Armadas come to crush Sequoia, and the rest of the Kotati on the moon after the Avengers have joined him. See, the, Avenger, the Avengers find Koi. Um, when, before they find Koi, there's a giant Kree sentry, which that would be cool to get a Kree sentry in one of these packs. Kree sentries, if you're not familiar, they're super powerful robots that are built to fight in the Kree armada stead when actual Kree soldiers can't be there. They're super powerful. It takes a whole squad of Avengers to even put a dent in it, and really, honestly, they're not even capable of defeating one of these Kree sentries. But... They encounter this Kree sentry, but it's, it looks different. It's got a big plant head, and then all of a sudden this guy leaps out of nowhere. He slices the head off of it. That's Swordsman, um, who you find out in talking through Sequoia's uh, introduction uh, is Sequoia's father. But he's a reanimated version of Jacques Duquesne. He's a plant version, a resurrected plant version of Swordsman, who died a long time ago, was brought back to life, and then fell in love with Mantis, they had a baby, and that is Sequoia. That's how you're introduced, introduced to the Katati. You see that Thor has an immediate bond with Sequoia. Almost looks at him like he's, he's an uncle to him and promises to take care of him. Iron Man feels as though he's been drawn to the planet for some very large reason. He woke up from a dream feeling as though an entire race was wiped away and there was an injustice that needed to be fixed. And when Sequoia tells them the Kree and Skrull have joined forces and called a truce solely to come and destroy me and the rest of my race, the Avengers say that will never happen. And you're going, okay, so these guys couldn't kill a Kree sentry, but now they're gonna take down an entire armada of joint Kree and Skrull ships? How is that gonna happen? Iron Man comes up with a big plan, and part of it is Robbie Reyes having his moment in the sun, uh, where he all of a sudden, Tony Stark's like, phase one, are you ready, Robbie? And Robbie's like, yeah. He jumps in the Quinjet. You know how Ghost Rider is always riding around on a motorcycle and he's got flaming wheels and all that stuff. No, he, he makes it into a Ghost Rider Quinjet spaceship thing, a, a flaming Quinjet spaceship thing that launches out penance, uh, <laughs> penance stare missiles. I mean, he doesn't have a ton of them, but he starts hitting all these ships and his power starts coursing through them. And everyone starts you know, being just riddled with guilt. And he's just, he's crushing it. And then, like, there's this Cree soldier, I think his name's Captain Glory, which is one of the worst names, in my opinion, of a character for a very long time. But Captain Glory is, like, genetically engineered not to feel guilt. So then he looks at Ghost Rider and he's like, that stare's not going to work on me. And then they start battling each other. Uh, but that is a pretty cool moment, though. In these big crossovers, that's what really you're kind of rooting for, is these big awesome moments, and that, that's his big awesome moment. Anyway, Ghost Rider, Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D., Wakanda, and Mystical Keywords has a trait called Spirit of Vengeance. Ghost Rider deals penetrating damage to characters with two action tokens. Ooh, okay. Has Avengers and Mystics. Look at the back here, seven clicks long, 80 or 40 points. And uh, you know who his best friend would be from this set is that Kitty Pride Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. because she adds tokens to anybody she phases through. Um, he's doing penetrating damage. Uh, if they've got two action tokens, so she can start adding tokens. He can start doing penetrating damage. Pretty cool. Um, all right, let's move on to another character who has a really cool story beat. 
And this actually followed her into her own book. That's Captain Marvel. That's Carol Danvers' Accuser, um, which is just awesome. Doling out judgment across the galaxy. And with the changes that Carol has gone through over the years, I don't think there's any other Earthbound hero in Marvel that is more suited to play the role of an accuser, really, honestly. Okay, set number four. She comes in at either 130 or 70 points, so she is beefy. She's got Avengers, Kree, Cosmic, and Soldier keywords. She has a special damage power, the Universal Weapon, and has Energy Explosion, Penetrating Psychic Blast, and Quake. Called to Accuse, Bringing Justice, The Hammer Falls Heavily, The Supreme Accuser. Let's take a look at this dial here. Eight, seven clicks long, seven clicks long. Seven clicks long, Outwit, Impervious, 130 or 70 points. Now when you compare this to the 100 point Captain America, I'm not saying she doesn't crush, I'm not saying she's not awesome, but I think it makes that 11 click Captain America hyper impressive coming in at 100 points. But she is also really, really cool. And you should read her book, the, the, the Empire standalone thing for Captain Marvel is really cool as she struggles to kind of take the role of accuser on. Um, she doesn't struggle so much in, in the strength or just dealing out punishment because whatever, she's excellent at all that, but um, kind of whether or not she should be in that position. She kind of, you know, talks through it, but that's a really cool moment for her as well. Mm. Moving on, She-Hulk. Now, when you start Empire, She-Hulk is unable to speak intelligently. She is just an angry, savage version of herself uh, coming into the story. And in one of the scenes early on, Swordsman says, you know, I, Jessica, I barely recognize you. You're, she's not speaking intelligently. She's, she's just this grumbling mass of muscle. And he says, he says come with me and uh, I have a gift for you. And she goes off page and she comes back and, and she's speaking as herself. You hear Jennifer is back now and Thor goes, Je Jennifer, you're, you're back. And she says, yes, you know, they gave me this special weapon and they showed me some meditation techniques and it allowed me to emerge from, you know, my, my psyche and, and take control of the Hulk persona again. Um, what you don't know is what Swordsman actually did was kill Jennifer Walters, kills She-Hulk off page, and replaces her with this Kotati life form inside of her. And uh, you don't know it yet, but in the pages of the very first issue, Jennifer Walters is already dead. And you find out much later as uh, she starts battling with the thing, actually, later on. A big knockdown, drag out, your, your typical you know, thing versus She-Hulk kind of, kind of battle. And, um, but at the end of the series, you do get a little, uh, you know, epilogue where she goes to the green door, which if you read Immortal Hulk, uh, you know what that means. But she's told at the green door, um, you are not like Banner, you are not like Hulk, you will not come back repeatedly. If you die, uh, you will stay dead. I will grant you this one resurrection. So she comes back at the end of it all. Spoiler alert, sorry guys. Read how it happens, though, is still really, really cool. So, so go read how it happens, but she goes through quite the journey. Let's see what we have here on her card. She has Avengers, Brute, Cosmic, Monster, and Warrior. Set number 14, Kotati Corruption. When She-Hulk is targeted with mind control, modify her defense by negative two. I feel more alive than I have in years. A Hulk with a mission. I'm wearing her body like a suit of clothes. Ugh, ugh, that's gross. Uh, and then here you have on the back, she's only four clicks long, which is, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, she should be much, much longer than that. Um, I'm telling you. Well, I guess I guess Immortal She-Hulk shouldn't be, but there are so many references to the Katati corruption, all of those things. I mean, she puts Thing 
down. I mean, she is the enforcer for Koi and is, is undefeatable, basically, until Black Panther gets the Star Sword and is able to utilize it. So, um, you know, that's... Uh, I expected that dial to be longer. I really did. Okay, Koi. But it's such, it's such like this... It was a very big surprise in the story that she was already dead. Um, and yeah, I mean, she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with things. She goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with almost everybody. Uh, so I expected that dial to be a little, little bit beefier. Okay, but let's go to who she protects and who the main antagonist of the entire story is. That's Koi. Um, take a look here. He does have a really, really cool character design. He's like this plant elf ranger guy. And listen, his whole race was, was wiped out, you know? And at the end of the day, he's, he's pretty justified in, in, in wanting the revenge. I think it's the, he wants to destroy all life in the universe outside of plants is like where he goes a little too far. But, uh, you know, definitely wanting revenge on another race for eradicating your own, even though it was millennia ago, is, is, is still pretty warranted. Uh, but it does go off the deep end quite a bit. Let's see here. Oh, I think I called it the Death Flower yesterday, but I guess, I guess they're called Death Blossoms. Um, let's see. Koi has Cosmic Deity, Ruler, Warrior. Set number 55 comes in at 200 or 100 points, it looks like. Has a trait, the Death Blossom Sprouts. At the beginning of your turn, generate a Kotati plant, hindering terrain marker with six, within six squares. Then count the number of Kotati plant markers and perform the listed effect. Two plus plant markers generate a Kotati warrior bystander. Ooh, another generic. At four plus until your next turn, Koi and Kotati warrior bystanders occupying or adjacent to one or more Kotati plant markers modify attack and defense by plus one. If there are six on the board or more, Koi can use regeneration this turn, but only if he occupies a Kotati plant marker. And on 8 plus, deal one unavoidable damage to all opposing characters occupying or adjacent to one or more Kotati plant markers. So at the beginning of your turn, you're generating them every single round. So if you can keep him safe for eight rounds of a game, which good luck getting there sometimes, uh, he can become quite dangerous. It also has Swordsman's Lessons, Charge, Flurry, and Stealth. That's a special movement power flip it over here on the back Woo! 11 clicks long 200 for all 11 clicks um, you can have a six click dial for 100 you can see his special swordsman skills there present on the first three and then on clicks six through eight pretty brutal dial but no range um, necessarily on his own. However, can spawn these Kotati warriors with sidestep and everything as well. So it's a lot of just spawning these plants, seeing what you can do here. And we saw on the back of the tokens, uh, the token pack that we do have these Kotati warriors. Uh, we have a couple of them at least. So we can take a look at that. A little better uh, view here of them. So there you have it. That is all of the Boosters we have for day two of our unboxing series for Marvel's new Heroclix set, um, Empire. Uh, what do you guys think so far? We got a couple more villains today. I'm super excited that we got Beldan, but uh, I, still, I still want more, more villains. I want more classic scrolls. I want, I want the X-Men Super Scroll. I want Kalert himself. I want Arkill. I want uh, some more on the Kree side as well. I know we have a lot of Earthbound heroes that are involved in this story, and then we're getting surprising pieces outside of it. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. mutants were... They're very, very interesting to me that we're getting those guys. Um, what has been your favorite sculpt so far? Let me know in the comments down below. I mean, we've had some pretty cool ones. The, the Kitty Pride one is, you know, pretty neat. She's coming out of a little phasing area there. Um, I love that Captain America that we took a closer look at yesterday. The Wasp from today is really, really cool. Uh, are there any specific sculpts that you are really, really looking forward to? Uh, or do you like any of the ones that we've already gotten? You let me know in the comments below. Again, Empire 
hopefully will be coming out in early December for pre-releases and then in your hands, uh, able to buy them from your brick and mortar stores and your local comic shops who we need to be supporting right now throughout this time, especially, especially, especially in the holiday season. Hopefully you'll be able to pick those up from your local gaming stores or, or comic shops in mid-December, just in time for the holidays. Thank you to WizKids for sending me such cool stuff. And you know what? Uh, we're gonna take a peek at something extra today because not only did they send me the brick to share with you guys, but they wanna make sure they're getting as much stuff in front of you guys as they can. So uh, I'm gonna share with you guys the Play at Home kit and one other piece uh, before we sign off, as I'm thanking WizKids. Uh, we're gonna take a look at this Wolverine here. And this Wolverine, what's really cool about him is he plays nice with all three of the teams uh, that are really being focused on in this particular set. So here you go, you got Wolverine. And uh, he has the Avengers, the X-Men, and the Fantastic Four team ability, which is awesome. Let's take a look at his card here. Um, he has Avengers, Fantastic Four, Jean Grey School of Higher Learning, Shield, Weapon X, X-Force, and X-Men keywords. He has a trait. That's what happens when you scuffle with the old knucklehead at the beginning of your turn. Heal Wolverine one click and roll a d6. On a roll of four to six, heal one click for each distinct printed team ability shared by Wolverine and all adjacent friendly characters. Woo, that's an interesting take on regen. It also has a special movement power. You fight me, you're going to get hurt. End of story. Charge, flurry, and stealth. Look at the back of the card here. Nine clicks long. Woo! That is pretty nasty. And when you have a play at home set, you also uh, are sent uh, a map. And of course you can play at home, but this time uh, the map has individually numbered squares as well to make sure if you're playing remotely with somebody with a good friend of yours and you can, you can kind of see here. Uh, I'm not gonna unfold it all the way, but we have the Manhattan Outer Bridge. Um, as one of the maps for this. And if you look on here, uh, from the top down, you've got these squares and they, you know, I-22, I-20, I-19. It just allows you to, uh, to see where you are on the map. And on the bottom, you know, P-24, you can see that they're numbered and you can have a, a, a really strong sense of uh, where the pieces need to go. And as long as you guys share the same pieces, uh, you, can, you can play remotely with each other. So maybe I will, I'll open it all the way so you guys get a look, look at it here. Um, I know there's a little bit of glare, doing my best. Uh, but the other side is really cool because the other side is uh, Hank Pym's lab indoor. When I first looked at it, I thought it was gonna be like a Weapon X facility, which would make sense for Wolverine, but it is Hank Pym's lab. So there you go, uh, the play at home kit there for you. And um, today is Friday. So going into the weekend, I wanna give you a little sneak preview of a brand new set that we're going to be getting in the year 2021. So hopefully we'll have this in your hands for the holidays. And then in the new year, you can start expecting um, some pieces from the new Disney Plus uh, What If set that is coming out. Um, this will be the first look that we have at a Daredevil that is becoming uh, in the next set in 2021. So I'll just give you a peek at the, the sculpt here. Not going to read you the card, but I'll show you a little preview of the dial. You can stop it. You can zoom in if you need to. Um, it is uh, super rare. Set number 46. Comes in at 75 points. Guy can fly. This is Daredevil. Can fly. He's got blades, claws, fangs. Super senses with a 19 defense. The attack is 11. Um, has a couple of special powers, eight movement and three damage. So a little sneak peek. Um, you know, I've been mentioning the holidays a lot throughout this particular unboxing series, hoping to have this set to you by that time. But there's another holiday coming up next week that is always, always not given its due. Uh, and that is Clicksgiving. I mean, well, no, Thanksgiving. But uh, we will be celebrating Clicksgiving. Uh, I have three more pieces from that set to show you on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as well as uh, another Prime from this set, as well as another Chase from this set. I don't know if I have a Chase in my boosters, but they did send me one to share with you guys regardless. So I can't wait to show you guys all of that stuff next week, so make sure you tune in 
back here on Monday. I wanted to say thank you to WizKids one more time. Thank you to you all for watching. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you're super excited about with this set. And thank you to Hyper RPG Studios. If you haven't watched their stuff on Twitch live or on their archives or their live streams on YouTube, please do that. Uh, they have everything you could ever want, uh, whether it's video games, tabletop games, role-playing games, as well as an archive series called Indomitable that was all about hero clicks. Uh, that is going to do it for us here on day two. Find me here on Monday for day three of our unboxing series and uh, day one of clicks giving, I suppose. Uh, keep an eye out later today also for a special unboxing video specifically dealing with this awesome miniatures game uh, that we have, uh, which is also based on Empire. I will see you guys on Monday or in that video, and until I do, may all your roles be critical hits.